You are listening to the number one fitness, health, and entertainment podcast. This is Mind Pump. Now, in today's episode, uh, we actually answered live questions from people who listen to our podcast. So they We're call- live now. They called in. They asked us fitness and health questions. We help them out. Now, that's at the back part of this episode. The way we open the episode is with a 36-minute intro portion where we talk about current events and we tell fun stories and we talk about some of our sponsors. So let me give you a rundown of today's intro portion. We open up by talking about how Justin is not in charge of his house right now. Yeah, maybe with the dogs is what you're referring to. Yeah. <laughs> then we talk about the first apartments that we owned or worked at or lived in, I should say. Uh, I talk about how my son is going through some growing pains and how that's uh, affecting our sleep. Uh, I talk about how he also prevents me from uh, making whoopee with my wife, <laughs> bringing that L- word back. Uh, then, then we talked about the two-year-old uh, and their family that kicked off a plane because the two-year-old would not keep a mask on. I talk about the coffee test that people are using to see whether or not they have COVID. Uh, we talk about the peanut butter protein balls. They're called the uh, the holiday Buckeye balls. They're delicious. It's a lot of bees. M- made you know, with Organifi protein. By the way, Organifi is a phenomenal company we work with. It's a supplement company, vegan and organic. All their prog- uh, products are organic. Go check them out and use the code MindPump for 20% off. Go to Organifi.com. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com forward slash MindPump and then use the code MindPump for 20% off. Then I talk about how a study shows that cockroaches soon will be invulnerable to pesticides. Uh-oh. Le cucarachas. And then Adam brought up a cool website called Uncommon Goods. So that was the first 36 minutes of this episode. After that, we got into the live questions. We talked to Rolando from Germany. We talked to Teresa from Iowa, Ethan from Florida, and Aaron from New York. You're going to love that part of the episode. Also, this month, uh, we've put together three bundles of workout programs for three different types of people. Okay, Each bundle is roughly nine months of exercise programming. That means for every day during that nine-month period, you have your workout planned out for you. You have workout videos and demos and instructions so you know exactly what to do. Here are the three bundles. The first one is for beginners. It's called the New to Weightlifting Bundle. The second one is for intermediate lifters. That one's called the Body Transformation Bundle. And the third bundle is for advanced lifters and trainees. It's called the New Year Extreme Intensity Bundle. By the way, they all come with one year of free access to our private forum on Facebook. So you can ask people questions. You can take videos of your forum to get critiques. You can share funny memes. Or you can ask Adam, Justin, or myself a question because we're on there as well. You can find all of these bundles and learn more about them at mapsdecember.com. That's the word maps, M-A-P-S, December. Dot com. Why does your dog consistently punk you? What happened uh, this morning? Oh, well, I mean, it's again, like it's just uh, <laughs> things that happen, right? With things dogs that make you go. Where mm. He ate something outside, and when I was taking him to go to the bathroom, and then comes in and just pukes all over my carpet. Yeah. And, like, you know, yeah, he's just always, he's just so high strung. He's just very wound up tight and. Uh, you know, but at least he doesn't hunt me. You know? Have you, oh, well, like, okay. well, uh, no. yeah, like another dog. That's so true. Yeah. That's fine. Did you? Did but you that's just being friendly, though. Yeah, that's right. That's a nice yeah. thing. Would you figure out uh, what it was? What he did? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he eats. So he still eats shit. He's like a shit eating dog, dude. Uh, I mean, he just eats a, like <laughs> any chance he can. He'll just go like gobble it up. Ugh. It's just so disgusting, <laughs> and it, it, like I see red every time I actually catch him doing it, and I'm just—is like, it his own shit? No. I mean, he, sometimes it is, but you know, it's it's he doesn't discriminate. Any shit. No, no shit discrimination. Uh, I guess if you're into eating shit, you're not going to be very, very particular. I mean, uh, yeah, it's all shit. Does he has to say? Does it get particular? I, yeah, I don't not. know. He has a taste for it. I, I I don't really know how to. And we've worked with trainers on this. Uh, on various things, he's just, he's just like he's he his own. The- I, I've realized he's just a beast. He's just like this high strung, crazy beast that I'm always crowling. He just so, likes the flavor. Yeah. <laughs> so he's punking me. Yeah. He's probably is. That's disgusting. <clears throat> when you guys were kids, you guys ever taste dog food? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, a milk bone. You yeah. Eat one of those? That's what I had. That's what I so had. I tried a milk bone. I never tried dog food. I, you know what? This you didn't is eat such the a wet w- food, did you? No. Oh, oh can you imagine? No, no, no. <laughs> I, did the, I, I did the kibble. Oh, I tried yeah. the crunchy. Gross. Yeah. Why is that? Why did why do you all why did everybody try that when you're a kid? I don't know. When you're a kid, you're just 
uh, I guess people can trick you. Well, if you flip, things. if you flip the label back around, right, and you look at what's in it, it's mostly you were you were counting the macros back then. <laughs> well, I was <laughs> trying. So wait a minute. No, I, <laughs> this is high in protein. I mean, look it up. You, you're, the, you're the Google master over there. Look up a milk bo- <laughs> look up master. look up look up milk bone ingredients. And I think if you flip it around, it's all things that you eat as a human. So I think that's what probably makes you go, oh, okay. Well, I eat all these things. So I bet you there's not a single bit of milk or bone in one. Well, yeah, you do. <laughs> they totally lie. <laughs> give, give me the milk bone ingredients. Let me Let hear. me see. Milk me bone hear. ingredients. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to. Yeah. Pull it up right now. Let me see what and all of it is I hope like I, the scraps on the ground of uh, you know, like a food company. I, I, they I like, just throw that to like the dog. I food. like how it says. This is what it says, right? Twelve vitamins and minerals. Oh, that's nice. Okay, twelve wholesome and tasty. Okay, mm. here's the nutrition. First ingredient: ground whole wheat. Right. See, wheat, wheat flour, meat, a meat and bone meal. What the hell is poultry? Meat bone milk, beef, beef fat. fat, salt, chicken meal, turkey. Bacon fat, right? I mean, these things are all sound wait things. Wait a minute, wait a minute. That's not the same one I'm looking at. Uh, I'm looking at one too. Ground, yeah. ground whole wheat, wheat flour, meat and bacon. bone meal, poultry, beef fat, salt, chicken, turkey, bacon. You know? Wow. Hmm. Here's you know right, right? I mean, these are I all. Mean, that's more than I thought. Would you be know like. how they do that? You ever look at like dog- almost sounds a little tasty. So I when yeah. I had when I had dogs, I I would buy the you know just because at, at this point I was into fitness, so I'd look at the back. Mm-hmm. And you ever see the nutrition facts on a dog food? They don't do it normal. Like they'll do something like this: like crude protein, fifteen percent; crude, crude fat, five <laughs> percent; yeah. crude fiber, three point five. I got to do math. How do I figure out how many grams of stuff oh, is in this? Yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> what do you mean? That's all funny. this, you know, fifteen and five percent and all that stuff. Because most people don't even care. Yeah. yeah. And one thing, one thing I noticed when I was a kid, because I tried, I, I did the kibble, and then I did some other Costco brand or something when I was real young. <laughs> yeah, you tried for multiple just, times. What? Just two, two. Of them. It was like a dare. Right? Oh, yeah. like I, you could dare a kid to do it, stupid it, stuff. That's like that. how I think I went down with yeah. it too, Justin. I think it was one time, and it was just I was like, curious. yeah. No. <laughs> I was like, mm, yeah. Mm, I was genuinely curious. Oh, this might pair well. Let me try that science diet over there. Let they, me see how they, <laughs> they tasted the same. Both of them tasted the same. muscle. I was like, no, what, are we, no, no, no. what are we giving our dogs? Because I off? mean, don't they? Don't they just? It's like the leftover shit of everything, yeah. right? So oh, it's yeah. like what's on the floor, sweep it all up, and then turn yeah. it into kibble, and then they sell it. Or if whatever. you think about it, like Gel a dog, the average dog's diet is one hundred percent processed food. Yeah, it's yeah. fake, dude. Yeah. Nothing 100%. smells worse than cat food. Though. I used oh. to take care of my neighbor's cats and opening those like cans of meat and then the the jelly, you know, the fat that like rose to the top on the t- and it's just like the smell. Mm. Ugh, God, well, it was the worst. Did you, do you like cats or you don't like cats? No. You you're just a, don't like them. Not, I, I like animals. Do you you're I a like, big cat guy. I'm not secret, a cat guy. You're a secret yeah, cat I'm guy. I'm not wow. like there was one cat that was like would, was really friendly and come up to me and would you know like acted a lot more like a dog. I liked that cat. Really? Yeah. But you. But general, that was it. What about in you? In general, Adam? no. You like uh, cats? My fir- my first animal I ever uh, bought was a cat. So not like not growing up, but like the first was an adult when I had my own place. And you're all white. Yeah, interior house. That's right. I had a, an all white him. Uh, yeah, yeah rag doll cat. I knew it. Yeah, shipped from New York. <laughs> oh my god, dude! Yeah, yeah. Did you literally I, I had a, I had when a, you did this? When you moved out and got your house, were you literally thinking to yourself, "How can I look like I'm trying to be like Hugh Hefner?" Like, <laughs> I don't think that. I don't How think. Can I try uh, harder? I, I think uh, maybe subconsciously I was doing that. Right? I don't. I don't think I was like, "Oh, I'm going to be Hugh Hefner." But I think that uh, I think I thought Hugh Hefner was pretty badass. I want my house yeah. to guarantee I get laid. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I I like nice things. I liked. Uh, I, well, I used to like white. I used to think that that would like having an all white house was a really cool idea, and it is if you have no friends or pets or anything. Um, or if be, you never move in there. Yeah, yeah, right. It really, I did though. I had like the uh, all white pottery barn uh, couches. I've had the white sheets, white bed. Wh- I had so you the, just never ate Cheetos. It was a cleaning yeah. nightmare. Yeah, it was, you know what? I kept it pretty clean, and it was. I think it was really cool for like a year, and then after that, it was just you know, yeah. Eventually, you have friends and parties and people tromping in and out of the house. I had white carpets too, right? So it was just. The house got uh, destroyed pretty quick, and I learned my lesson on like, okay, white's not cool. But it really, I didn't think, uh, you know, I'm like I'm being like this Playboy guy, but I'm sure subconsciously like that was. That's why Justin's first place was all brown shag. Yeah, he's like nobody can I tell. I gotta hide all my shit, <laughs> dirt and shit. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's a lot easier, you know. Crumb, so, crumbs so, just falling in the yeah. carpet. No big deal. Uh, where'd it go? Can't I don't tell. Know. I can't see it. Can't Leave tell. it there. Yeah. What color carpet would you like? Do you have a Cheeto color? Yeah. 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 Is it speckled yeah. so that yeah. way you can't? Yeah. yeah. Do you have any that hides crumbs really well? Yeah. It's like camouflage. <laughs> do you have Do you have ca- reversible? Yeah, I just live in all camouflage. Yeah. <laughs> that would be my ideal. That's hilarious. Yeah. What did your face? I never. I only lived alone. Uh, for a short period of time, because you guys know I got married way too young. Yeah. Did you have a place on your own before yeah, you got married? I had a couple. Uh, All by yourself? Did you have roommates? Um, I had roommates, typically. Uh, but, I mean, obviously, the dorm room doesn't really count. I had a roommate there, too. But I had one semester where I got to live by myself, which was awesome. Uh, but it was like, it was such a bachelor, like stupid poster. Uh, I, I didn't even have like a headboard to the bed. You know, it was just like mattresses stacked. Uh, very much bare bones, like George Foreman grill, and I'm good. Oh, dude. that was it. That was me. So I, th- when I I moved out when I was uh, 21, and it was for like eight months before I got married. Right, so I moved out and I went down. You guys know this Palm De- Palm Springs, and I had the gym down there. So I had an apartment, and literally it was. Oh wait a second, your Palm Springs um, experience was the first time you living away from home. Yep. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I was a kid, dude. I was mm. only uh, well, again, I was twenty or twenty-one. I was seventeen, so I, that's a real kid, right? I was still in high school when I moved. Yeah. Out, so, yeah, 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 but yeah. I didn't know that was your first. I was a real boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a real boy. I'm a real boy. <laughs> okay, but no guilt. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. So because I, I was going to get married, so I moved out and um and. I bought that, you know, I had ownership at that gym. So I had an apartment and all I did was work and work out. And so my apartment literally was an air mattress. So it was a, I, got a, I got like a two bedroom apartment. Yeah. Air mattress was my bed. Yeah. I bought a fold out table for the kitchen and two fold out chairs. And then of course, sick ass TV. Yeah. <laughs> in the oh, corner. Yeah. And we'd sit on the floor and watch TV. And yeah, that my, was it. My favorite house we lived in. So it was like in the suburbs. I finally lived off campus. And so I lived with two other guys. And we all worked at the same restaurant. And so we'd have different shifts and stuff. And we'd come back and drink and whatever. It was a total party house. But we spent money on like one couch. And then the rest, we just like went on campus and like took like furniture and stuff and like found like random stuff people were throwing out and like made it work. Dude, we're in college. We had no money. Uh, and anyways, but there was like this basement to it. And so I tried to have some band practices there and everything. And then we got the cops called on us all the time because we were like breaking all this noise ordinance and all this, but yeah, it was a good time. What did you eat back then? Because I know you didn't have any oh money. What was your I diet? ate just at the restaurant, you know, for the most part. For but school, you mean? Eating off people's plates. It was so much better. It was so much better <laughs> hey, than the cafeteria that? at school. Cause yeah, that's what... Uh, part of the deal of me going there with this partial scholarship was that I had all my meals taken care. Of. I had like room and board and all that stuff. Oh, they 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 re- they totally regretted that contract after you showed up after a week. <laughs> oh yeah, fuck. Oh, stacking, he ate way more food. Stacking than we did. plates, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I took that as a competition, yeah. and then I would just work out. It literally, my life consisted of just working out, uh, trying to stay awake in class. Uh, doing whatever I could minimally outside of that school wise and then working. So when I moved out, because remember I, my, you know, old school Italian family, my mom did everything for me. Uh, I ate tuna fish sandwiches, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I learned how to grill chicken in a George Foreman. Yes. And I, and I learned, I had to learn how to make minute uh, rice in the bag. You boil it. Mm. And and then broccoli. I bought frozen broccoli, and that was it. That was my diet. That was all my diet. And just like you, all I did was work out, eat, and then I and then sometimes I'd go out or whatever. You know what's funny though? Looking back, isn't or did you kind of miss it a little bit? Oh uh, yeah, it was good times. I mean, it was a totally different life. Simplicity, but, right? Yeah, it was totally simple. Fuck that. Yeah, <laughs> fuck that. I don't miss none of that shit. Are you kidding <laughs> me? Hell no. You grew dude. up that way. That's why. Yeah, maybe that's. What, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. A, no, I got a little more when I got on my own at seventeen. Right? Yeah. Like, oh look, there's ice cream in the freezer every night. That's <laughs> yeah. fucking. That was. Yeah. It was an upgrade, right? Yeah. No, it was like uh, so. Uh, hot pockets, frozen corn dogs, uh, frozen bean burritos, and uh, top ramen. George Foreman grilled chicken breast, cans in the ravioli. That's grocery shopping right there. Oh, yeah. mm. Hunter Tom, every time I go to the grocery store, that all is, that mattered uh, was a gram. You know the disgusting. I gotta admit, I had a disgusting habit of eating a lot of easy cheese and triscuits. Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> that was like my snack of choice <laughs> oh, in college. Oh, it's it so gross. You just go through a can? Oh, yeah, cans. And my mom would send them in the mail. I'd get all excited. No, <laughs> no like, yeah, it's bacon flavor. Oh, That's, my yeah. God, it's so dude. gross. Oh, my God. That's hilarious. Yeah, yeah dude, it. that was my thing. You know what? That didn't attribute to any of your gut issues. I was just nah. going to say. <laughs> What's, you know what's weird about all, all this? What's really weird is we all have gut issues now. Yeah, it's very yeah, strange. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's uh, surprising. Well, I think, I, I that think that's a, like a lot of the passion right behind the show when we first started this was like to share that experience, I think, with our audience is not that uh, I don't, or at least I hope we don't ever come off like we're sitting on our ivory tower telling everybody else what they should oh, do. No. It's more like, listen, I, I thought I was okay eating those corn dogs and burritos <laughs> and things like that. Right. You know, when and as a young as a young kid, when you're doing that, if you're if you're uh, exercising or playing sports exactly. and you're moving enough, you don't put on any body. Well, fat the way that I judged it was this: yep. uh, Am I fat? No. Okay, cool. And then and then this is the extent of the nutrition uh, that I would go in for myself. This is how far I would go. How many grams of protein does it have? Oh, cool. <laughs> 30 grams of protein, I'll eat it, and I'm not fat, good. I'll just keep that's doing how that. The can that was it. So that's how the can of raviolis came in, totally. right? So if you eat a huge family size of can of raviolis, you could get like a good 40, 50 grams of protein, <laughs> yeah. and it's like 1,600 calories. Yeah. Oh, so man. like that was like that was the extent of mine, too. It's like <laughs> calories, I need more calories. Yeah. I can't gain calories, weight for the- protein. I couldn't gain weight for the life of me. I was trying to get protein. Yeah, that was, uh, that was the, that was, the I figured formula. I figured you could get a decent amount of protein. No joke, when I figured out a pound of pasta gave you a decent amount of protein, then I would eat a pound of pasta. Oh, that that wow. was it. It was all about, when I found out nuts had protein. Oh God, God bless, man. Mm -hmm. I was you just nutted. I was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. wow. All over wow. Adam's yeah. White House. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That was, that was, a, that was my fault. That was a throwback reference right there for sure. <laughs> Do they even say I'll that anymore? The no, that. No. They don't say nutted. No, I don't no, think. So. I don't think. Do you guys so. remember when it back. was it? Planters came out with that uh, advertising campaign. Bust Planters, the, nut. The, the one that doesn't wear pants. Yeah. 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 Bust the nut. Is that what he says? That was a commercial. It was bust the nut. Like you're cracking the nut, but they didn't realize that. I don't re other connotations. I don't remember that. Yeah, I don't remember that ad at all. Yes. No. You know, I the 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 peanuts and the cashews and stuff like that. I went on a kick for that for a minute, but uh, it really I, I overdid it. Right. Like so, I used to keep like a I used to keep it in my work right. Twenty four fitness used to keep a big old jar of peanuts or nuts in there. Is that so I I could get the calories so all I'd be, day. Yeah, I'd shovel Same. them down all day long. And those that stinks up on you. The next thing you know, your ratio, your macro ratio is like eighty percent fat. You know, like thousand extra calories you don't need, and maybe like a little bit of protein in it. So uh, it always ended up putting body fat on me when I started doing the whole nut thing. When I you start figuring later. out the macros, and you realize what, what you've been doing this whole time. Yeah. Why, oh my. Oh, so a whole jar of peanut butter definitely has enough protein, but however, yeah, yeah. has all this other stuff because that's right. what I would do. I'd sit there with the jar of peanut butter, and then oh, I got nothing to eat. Well, this has. Let me see. Right. Do the math. Oh, 40 grams of protein. Yeah. Let's do this. Yeah. yeah hey, it I made saw, sense. I saw a picture of your son. Man, his hands are getting big. He's growing quick. He's dude. he's going through some growing pains right are now. You, uh, are you are you all aware <clears throat> too? It's just crazy. Super hyper aware, but you know, they go through these like uh so do you, did you guys watch that documentary? Yes, and they don't everyone thinks that babies, babies they, they don't grow yes. at all for like five and then they have a huge spurt overnight. And the then, way that kids grow, oh, yeah. especially babies, is it's not a there was this this not woman. Linear. There was this woman that uh, her studies were like groundbreaking where she would go and meticulously measure and test children every single day for years. And her theory, which was what a lot of parents had said, a lot of parents say, my, all of a sudden, I, you know, my kid in one, you know, one week changed overnight or whatever, and scientists thought that they were full of shit. No, it's all linear growth or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's not true. Uh, kids grow in spurts. Like all of a sudden, they'll go through these radical changes in a short period of time. And I remember this as a parent with my older kids. Yeah, when they start going through the growing pains. Oh, like, especially like, you know, with the bones and everything and the achiness. It's like it all happens at once and then they get through it. Or just cogn uh, cognitively. Like, yeah. I'll go to work. And I don't remember, I'll never forget. I don't remember how old my son was, but he started talking pretty early. He's a pretty talkative kid. But I remember one day I come home and he's just a little guy and something fell in the garage or whatever and it made kind of this noise. And he goes, what was that mysterious sound? And, I'm, and I, I, he all of a sudden <laughs> used a word like yeah. that. It was like overnight. Like he, perfect he, sentence. He changed yeah. so much. And yeah. so my son right now, he's at the age, and we're reading about this, where they say expect them to be more fussy, more needy. They're going to want to you know, breastfeed a little more because they go through this, this all of a sudden this rapid neurolo neurological change 
And so that was last night. How e- like how self-aware. how epic are the those new apps that they have? Oh, I mean, they're, they're great. They have apps. So we. What use, are you talking about? Oh, okay. So you don't use you never use this no. stuff. Uh-huh. Oh, dude, they have apps right now, and I, I I don't know the names off the top of my head. I'll have Katrina look it up for people that will end up asking me. Um, she uses a bunch of them, and they're really cool because. Uh, and I, I think it's a it's an incredible tool for a first time parent because you go through all of a sudden everything's you got a routine everything's smooth yeah. kids doing great and then all of a sudden out of nowhere he's fussy or mm-hmm. irritable or clingy or scared like or, what the hell yeah like what the hell and I ninety nine point nine percent of the time we go to this app and it's like spot on yep like and it, the way it does it it says like okay from weeks here to here mm-hmm. he should be going through these things mm-hmm. he you might notice that he's a little clingy to one of you you mm. might see that he refuses to go to people that he would go to before he might be you know irritable his sleep gets and they they talk about that it's a, a growth spurt uh, that he should be going through and these are all common signs and the signs always line up yeah so so i'm reading off the app right now or a screenshot because jessica sent it to me this morning it says mm. you may recognize some of the following signs indicating that the leap has started the leap meaning this growth spurt you, the, they cry more often than before they want to be kept busy they lose their appetite they're shyer with strangers all of a sudden or they clean more than usual, they sleep poorly, start sucking their, th- uh, their thumb type of deal. So these changes, and this happened last night. So last night, uh, you know, I'm, I'm in bed with Jessica, and he's just he's just not settling down yeah. all night. And yeah, You're well, in the storm. Oh, at some point, I, <laughs> at some point, Jessica's like, Sal, wake up. Sal, <laughs> you, I need, you, you need to be I miserable with me. I need your help. I'm like, <laughs> oh, all right, babe. <laughs> no, it's, uh, what a cool tool though. I mean, I, I think that's so neat. And and imagine being, I mean, we talk about being older fathers, right? But I mean, Sal, you went through it in your 20s. Just imagine going, to, I can't imagine being 20 years old and going through this inconsistency because they're very inconsistent, right? Mm-hmm. When they're this young, they're so inconsistent. You're like all of a sudden one day is beautiful sleep. Everything's perfect. Then three days later, all of a sudden it's like chaos, right? Yeah. And imagine as young parents, you're like, ah, troubleshooting oh, yeah. and freaking out, not knowing what. And I tell you, every time we refer to the app when stuff's going on, it's always like spot on with what he's going through. And then it makes us more uh, empathetic and patient as parents, mm-hmm. like to know like, oh, the poor guy, he's probably feeling mm-hmm. these right and going on right now. He's confused. Or like, well, I remember when the eyesight one, which I think you got coming up real yeah. soon here, like Right now, at his age, I think he can they only start to realize that the, yeah. that distance. Yeah, he so can, now he, when you walk away, they'll yeah, freak out. he can only see. I think your son can only see like twelve inches from his face or something. Like that. Or clear, like clearly, right? Mm-hmm. Make out like a clear image, like a foot away from him, and then all of a sudden you'll go through yeah, another leap where you can cool. see. That would have been cool to have for sure. We just had like a um, updates. Like you get like these emails sent from Kaiser, I think, and they tried to like kind of describe like what phase they probably were in and like the characteristics of that phase and to look at, but it wasn't uh, as a Sophisticated is what you guys are describing. Oh, yeah, I know. And we're in that whole, like, you know, like getting any intimate time with, with my wife is almost impossible. I swear to God. Uh, like, you just say, oh, is he asleep? He's, and he's cocked. And I don't want to feel like a jerk. I don't want to come across as a jerk, you know, because yeah, I'm yeah. waiting for yeah. him to kind of fall asleep. Right. So, or okay, so she, oh, and it's then, difficult. And man. then I'll be like, I'll be up and I'll be like, hey, babe, I'm like, uh, if, he, yeah. is he asleep? You want to put him down? You want to fool around? And she'll be like, and, and, you know, my, she's always, you know, she's cool. So she's like, yeah, she's like, but he's in the room, and I'm like, we can go in the closet, and she's like, wow, that's so romantic. And I'm like, listen, babe, <laughs> that's beggars can't now. Beggars can't be choosers, okay? <laughs> yeah, okay. Dude. But as soon as she puts him down, and I'm like, you little cock. Yeah. I can't, I can't wait till I want to see if she does the Katrina move with the whole carrying the nanit with her. You know what I'm saying? That's how I have to get. I sex, can't do that. You know what I'm dude. saying, I, no. I, I was like, I can't do this either. I can't have sex with my video on my kid, dude. <laughs> that's the worst. <laughs> can't do it. Well, we'll see, bro. Right now, you're not getting anything. Just you might just take. Off. You might just take anything you could get at that point. Just close my eyes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> why yeah. are you closing your eyes? Yeah, yeah. I don't want to see the camera. That's why. <laughs> Speaking of kids, did you? Did you? I, so I didn't know this. Apparently, the policy on airplanes is. If a child is two years old or older, oh, I saw this. They have to wear a mask. I That's saw ridiculous. what you're going to refer to right yeah, now. Did you hear? About, did you see this video? Yeah, the of lady this? in tears and stuff like that because her two year old wouldn't put a mask. Well, on. Well, I feel for them because uh, try getting a two year old to keep their socks on. I yes, know. you know, let exactly. Al- let alone a, a mask. Yeah. How, well, how are you going to do that on a plane? Well. <sighs> I mean, it, it's just it, it, to me that's way too young to to you know impose that kind of uh, you know uh, law or whatever you rule. call that rule. Uh, you know, like you got to be. 
I don't know, dude. I, I go back and forth all the time because I'm like cognizant that people are really fearful of all yeah. this thing. But like, there's just really not a lot of uh, substance behind having kids uh, wearing the masks at that young. Well, Do I you- feel like they're gonna mess with it anyway. They're gonna touch things anyway. Plus, I, I, I mean, okay, look, you guys have kids. Like, your, your son is uh, is coming up on a on two years and right. what six months or so. Yeah. And your kids are older now. Remember when your kids were two or three? Justin, yeah. you imagine telling them impossible. Dude. You have to wear this for I don't know however long the flight is three hours. Oh, especially and even now, my kids being the age they are, they want to just burn it. You know, they want to throw it off. And I'm like, we, this is just what we all got to do. You know, it's like I guess you're just not going to travel. Do you? Well, I was going to say, it. do you remember where? I, I don't remember reading the article or the video I saw and seeing what they were doing. Right. So I mean. M- what, I, what I, they were doing with the little girl? No, 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 like uh, like where they were going or something like that. Like, right? I'm, I mean, here's the thing. Like, I I have empathy if if you you have to be traveling and you and you and you need to take your two year old somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, personally, myself, like you know, I I'm not I'm not going to probably try. If we have issues like that, like I don't even want to put my kid in that situation. Sure, so right, I, sure. I just opt out, take a vacation another year, or do something different. Right, like. <laughs> I, I don't travel in a van. I don't subscribe to this uh, saying that everybody says this is the new normal. Fuck this. There's nothing no, normal I, about this, yeah, and uh, like, and nothing. I will adjust my lifestyle to what's going on if I don't want to be presented with issues like that. But mm. I don't know if they had to, right? Well, we're, we're almost at a breaking point. I mean, it, it was like at the very beginning of this year, and we we're all like, "Oh, this is gonna be a phase," you know, and this is the. But it's 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 December now. Yeah. You know, and you know this is going to continue into next year, and there's people that are still going to be afraid, and let them be afraid, let them, you know. But also, we got to figure out now how to let people live their life. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see what that looks like, but it's just, uh, it's it's hard. It's so hard to fly with a two or three year old anyway. I've done it, uh, and it's very kid. They don't want to sit in their seats. Oh, yeah. You have to figure out ways to to occupy them. They cry. The pressure. I'll never do it again. I did it with with uh, my oldest uh, when he was two. We went to Hawaii and totally ruined the whole trip, dude. He, and he just had like a little cold, you know. And it was the air pressure and everything else where he was screaming that whole flight. You know, we and did. I was that parent. I'm so, walking around. So we trying we to we, we went to Italy with my son when he was uh, a little guy. And how little do you remember? He was I want to say three, two and a half, three wow. years old. So it was rough. I'd be um, so nervous to do Now, that. my son, oh. grant, granted, my son was a chill kid. If it was my daughter, pff, that would have been, oh, my God, I would have, I don't know what would have happened. But my son's a pretty chill kid, but still, he's three years old. So you know what we did that, that one of, another parent told me that I think was a smart idea? They said, go to the dollar store and buy a shit ton of cheap little stupid $1 gifts, uh, toys. Mm-hmm. Put them in a bag, bring them with you on the plane. Every hour, you introduce a new you one. You bring out a new one, yeah. uh, and then they're occupied with the new stupid toy for an hour, and they get sick of it, and then you give them yeah. another one. So if you're on a flight for eight hours, you bring eight. Well, to we 10. didn't have iPads either, so that would have helped a lot. Yeah, that yeah. totally would have yeah, helped. It's game changer now. <laughs> uh, along those lines, uh, I read this interesting article on on uh, how some people are saying that you could kind of, kind of, not nearly as of course as accurate as an actual test to test if you have COVID, but what they're saying is they're calling it the coffee test. Or if you have ground coffee, go to smell it. And if it if you can't smell the coffee or it smells totally different than what you believe coffee to smell like, mm. then you you're it's you might have COVID. So the people are using this as like a cheap way to test. Really? Uh huh. Because oh. a good percentage of people, I think it's a majority of people with COVID, have altered. That's what I've heard the smell. most. Yeah. yeah. The, the the smell and taste has been most effective. So they're saying ground coffee is a good way to do this. Oh, that's interesting. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, yeah. I never yeah, heard. Kind of cheap or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna start carrying that. I know. I'm so paranoid. <laughs> Just hey, it. Can you smell this real quick? What does that smell like? <laughs> you know what I mean? That's anyway. Funny. Hey, what'd you guys think of the peanut butter uh, protein balls? Oh, or? dude. I got it, dude. That. that Jerry, I'm so glad Jerry's doing this. She keeps now. like one upping her last uh, last uh, creations. The peanut butter with. chocolate with sprinkle was amazing. That, so the coconut ones were good too, but the 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 peanut butter. I, I want to say what is it? A pe- it's peanut butter. It's then so chocolate, rich. Yeah, and then the the sprinkles. I'm you gonna know look it all? up right now. Oh, did she uh, send it to you? Yeah, she sent the recipe. They're called uh, healthy. Let me see, healthy holiday Buckeyes. I don't know why they're called Buckeyes. Mm. So it's one cup of all natural peanut butter. One teaspoon of vanilla extract, a quarter teaspoon of ground cinnamon, a third cup of uh, this one has coconut uh, pulsed in a, in a food processor, and then half a cup of vanilla uh, protein. We used Organifi's protein, and then two tablespoons of maple syrup. Now these were good, like like at a party. Good. Yeah, like a it's treat. almost like a yes yeah, dessert. 
yeah it, like it tasted like so good yeah so I like are you guys good are you guys good about that like when you go to like family events like the the dish or the tray or the treat that you guys bring do you guys try and do stuff like this to introduce to your family or do you just say write it off and say well, i'm all in we always bring the vegetables <laughs> do you really yeah, yeah we do salad and vegetables do you really you know why because there's um, never one treat because if there's no vegetables yeah. i'm going to be upset right yeah. so we end up bringing the big vegetable plate yeah yeah you know well, courtney yeah. makes these really good cookies so like she like did it once and then all of a sudden now it's like you have to bring those back you know everybody wants them tasting so. good or healthy good no tasting good oh i was gonna yeah, say yeah. No, yeah, yeah i had her apple pie there was nothing healthy about that thing no dude, it not was not amazing though yeah exactly <laughs> this, I didn't the, have her dessert apple pie. to me you're yeah. trying to make healthy dessert like, it, like that's like ridiculous like oxymoron <laughs> Like, what, dis- are you, what are you doing? I disagree. I fa- I have found I found now like because uh, and and maybe this is us getting older, right? So uh, I feel like my palate has changed, right? So when I was younger, and probably because of how much candy and sweets and stuff I would eat, I wanted like these like rich things. Like I like things. Now like, you just want to work like cin- original. Mm. Like <laughs> see, well that that caused me to eat less because I'm like, oh, it's so rich. Oh uh, yeah, like cinnabon and things like that. Like I could I could cr- crush a whole red velvet cake. Now I can't do this stuff. I like stuff that's really light and, and not very sweet. It just get, give me a little bit of sweet, and I feel like I'm having a like dessert. a Sour Patch Kid. No, oh, okay. no, not that. That's like <laughs> the opposite of what I'm talking about right now. From all the Sour Patch Kids I probably had as a kid, uh, ruined that for so me. So, what do you guys bring then to parties? Uh, it depends. So, like we, like Katrina makes a lot of really cool, healthy appetizers. Uh, like one of the last ones that we just did, I uh, we take those. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if you guys have ever seen those, like a uh, really thin uh, rice paper wonton wonton paper. Oh, I think you told me about this. Right, yeah, made out of rice paper, and you put them in the the the, the muffin or you know cupcake baking pan, whatever you call mm-hmm. that. I don't know what you call it, uh, but you put those in there, and and then we do like ground turkey and like a cilantro or tomatoes and a little sprinkle a little bit of cheese on top of the ground turkey. Mm. Yeah, and that sounds you, good. Oh, it's amazing. It ta- it, they taste so good and they're light. They're really light. They got a nice punch of protein in it. So. I will say, you know what Jessica's made a couple times that I love? And this is one of my favorite uh, hors d'oeuvre uh, that you'll see at a party uh, or appetizer, Ooh, deviled yes. eggs. Oh yeah. I love deviled eggs. Yeah, those so are good. I, they're incredible and it's Pure protein. Yeah. No, no, it's all. Yeah. So, I mean, we try, we try our best to be the person or the, be the, the, the couple in the, in the family events that when we bring something, we try and introduce it to the family that it's, you know, this is, could be, you could eat a little healthier and it still be really good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're actually at like a moment where we're starting to almost take over the dinner uh, because it's like we're starting to see, signs of less enthusiasm behind it in terms of like like my parents or her parents like used to just you know be the ones that would make the big production uh, with the turkey or the ham or whatever you know like uh, the prime rib uh so we're we're almost i think next year we're just gonna overhaul it and and do it and then we can have everybody else bring food did you guys get your hands from shauna I did get my ham. Did you get yours? Yeah. Okay. Did you yeah. guys, you guys eat them? Try that I haven't too. made. Yeah. It. I don't know how to make a ham, but I'm going to use. Well, the just so you, I was going to say, just so you know, it's already made. You just got to pretty much heat it up. Just heat it up. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like pretty dummy proof. Oh, nice. Yes. Yeah, so. nice. <laughs> hey, you guys want to hear hear terrifying something terrifying? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So here's a here's the title of the article: Cockroaches could soon be almost impossible to kill with pesticides. Because they've adapted. Dude, they're nuclear all- proof. Most they are. Yeah. Radiation doesn't do shit to cockroaches. Did you, yeah. know, did you know that? It's, I didn't know that. Oh yeah. Oh, they. they you could. You it's can be the last organism alive after all this. Yeah, we nuked the whole earth. Cockroaches would be fine. So it says cockroaches could soon be almost impossible to kill. Right. Most common household cockroaches are able to develop cross resistance to multiple types of chemicals. So they've become harder to kill and, and soon are going to become almost impossible. Isn't that great? Yeah. yeah. What? Could you imagine spraying a cockroach and then it just, it just walks it away? You. Yeah. It just walks just behind, brrr, the, walks behind all the fridge. Its friends I come feel up. like there's a huge business opportunity there, right? Mm. To come up with something besides a chemical. Cockroach that you, stomping. You know? I don't know, yeah. like tra- like <laughs> better traps, just, you know? like better. Him. Introducing the chancla. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Smash them. Yeah. No. Well, you know what's crazy? I heard also, too, like in New York and... I'm always fascinated with their rat infestation, but uh, why? Because it's 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 crazy. Like if you guys have ever seen videos of like the amount of rats oh, in on the New sewers, York, yeah, that's oh. where splinters from, right? Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, okay. they, they, they're all mutating it as we speak. Um, but I guess because of the lockdown and everything, there's not a lot of uh, food that you know gets dropped, and and they, you know, basically like has has promoted their survival, and so now they're starting to basically like cannibalize 
different different uh, families of rats are, are like out like killing each other now and eating each other. What? Oh, what in the world? Disgusting. Oh, they're swarming. Uh, New because the streets are empty. Yeah. Wow. Look at all the food sources run dry. New York New York City rats big as dogs. What? What? Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. I mean, isn't that crazy? These, that, these survivors, right? Yeah. And it's like you don't really see them all the time because they hide in the cracks and the between the walls and whatnot. But, dude, to know that that's going on behind the scenes, that always, like, freaked me out. Is that a real rat? That Look at the size be, of that. That can't be real, dude. That can't be that's real. That's not real. That's, <laughs> that's a like a cat, dude. That's a fake Bro, picture. I feel like you could ride that's that. Like a possum no or something way. else. Sit on his back. Yeah, that's not uh, real. That's yeah. disgusting. But that is nuts, dude. Yeah, yeah. that's crazy. You know, well, when I was in Palm Springs, uh, they had... Had huge cockroaches over there. Huge, dude. They were like this. Yeah. You ever seen one this big? Uh, when I lived in San Jose uh, at this fraternity house, we had plenty of those. Oh. <laughs> yeah. It was, the, it was the most disgusting oh. place I've ever lived. That, yeah. When you see one, there's there's a lot. Yeah. Know? Yeah. There's not just one. There's always there's always more. Exactly. Than that. Yeah. You know, I don't have wall. a I don't have a solid transition from a rat discussion and cockroach discussion, but I did come across something I wanted to share on the podcast. That, uh, last year, I think I shared like all these like top gifts and cool things to get. Uh, for people, I found a website I was unfamiliar with before called Uncommon Goods. Are you guys familiar with that? Yeah. Oh, you are familiar with uh -huh. that. Oh, Doug, do you know about that that, that website? I don't. I don't so, either. So this website's really cool. It's like you could. Uh, I mean, it's great for shopping for family for gifts mm -hmm. uh, for several reasons. One, it's got a lot of really unique, different uh, gifts that are on there. Oh, cool. Um, and it has a like all the price ranges. So if I want to spend between twenty and I can, you can do filters. Yeah. For the you Get know that price range, guy, down. girl, kid, whatever. And then on top of that. It even shows you, you can put a filter on there for uh, receive before Christmas. So then only things that like, so if you're kind of last minute shopping, if you're listening to this right now and you haven't got any Christmas gifts, if you go to that website and we're totally not affiliated with them mm -hmm. or anything, I just think it's a really cool. Yeah, I'm like, yeah I you? just found out about this. So it's interesting you bring it up. Yeah. And I, we, I so, saw, cause we were shopping some, uh, uh, some last minute stuff uh, last night and, and um, one of my clients turned me on to this website and I was going through and I was like, I went down the rabbit hole because there's like so many cool things on here. I found mm -hmm. so many cool gifts. I, started, I ran into a gift like that. I, uh, what a good idea this is. So it's a, a, a charging dock for your, your iPhone. Okay. Mm -hmm. Super common. Everybody's seen those. But it's enclosed, and when you when you put it into charge and enclosed, it's uh, UV ray lights to kill any bacteria on the phone. Huh. That's uh, smart right now. Yeah. Of course, it's smart yeah, right it now. Really it's smart. brilliant, that's, you, that's especially when our we you know that our phones are like one of the most uh, it's like, accessible. It is, yeah. and so how cool is that? Every, phones you come, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm come so home. dirty and disgusting. Yeah, no, yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to live up to my persona. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just here, just constantly picking my nose. Uh, yeah. No, yeah. no, I meant what's it's on good. the phone. Yeah, yeah, not, oh, not oh, the actual bacteria. Well, that too. I mean, it's all. The above. I'm not trying to hammer you about that. <laughs> yeah, That's such okay. a, well, now, you know what? This I'm looking at some of the gifts on there. Um, it's making me think of some fun stuff when I was a kid. Did you guys like buying when you were kids? Like airplanes, like balsa wood airplanes with propellers and stuff. Oh like yeah, the that. ones you guys that you into get that? with the, the rubber totally. bands, the rubber bands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. That was yeah, super fun. fun, right? And they it's were so cheap. Simple. You can get them for a couple bucks, right? You got oh, them they little... break instantly, but mm -hmm. they're fun while you have them. Super fun. Or they had the huge styrofoam one. You guys ever play with yeah, that one? Yeah. That you could just. You know, it's funny. I hadn't yeah. even thought of that until totally. right now. Yeah. I haven't, that was that's a old. Or, or those army men that you could like throw with parachutes and you'd throw them off the stairs and yeah. they'd like whoosh. they were so great and then simple and, and then here's another awesome one do you remember the rocket it looked like a rocket and you'd fill it with water, water. and pump it and yes yeah. yeah it would take I off have a video of that I, I got for uh Everett and he he loved it man we shot off rockets all day yeah see this kids don't play with any of this stuff because it's everything's so cool you need to check this website though it has a lot of different stuff like it does. that in there yeah yeah it's cool it's cool website our first question is from rolando in germany hey what's up rolando what's going on hey is that is that sal hey how you doing sal hey what's up man and uh, i got adam with me over yes. here what's up what's uh, up yeah, i think he, uh doug is switching up the uh the cameras hey adam what's going Jennifer on brother how, guys, how you uh, doing over there man man it's a long day long week uh, we're doing some some covid training right now so it's it's been one one hell of a week but it's you know we're getting it done Excellent. So, what's your question? Oh, so my so my my question is, I'm looking into changing my job to a job that's more physically demanding uh, on the body. So, it, my question is, how how do I build a like a strong, durable body to prevent injury? 
And uh, what type of nutrition would go well with that to, to prevent that? The, the type of training that you'll have to go through for this is like uh, rucking with like 60 pounds for miles, running for miles. You have to be uh, lots of calisthenics, uh, carrying lots of load. So, yeah. Okay, so that's, what's, that's what you're going to be doing. What do you do now? I, I want to know what the contrast looks like. Oh, I'm actually just doing MAPS anabolic right now. Uh, I just had eye surgery, so I'm getting my, trying to get my strength back. So I'm doing maps, uh, anabolic and I'm doing, I'm on the strength phase. So phase one, week three. Okay. Okay. OCR, man. Now, do you, do you have, uh, any areas where you tend to have pain now? Okay. So, uh, ankles, knees, hips, back, shoulders, neck. Are there any areas now that you think I better be careful because these, these tend to flare up on me? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I do actually have a little bit of, I know I have some hip mobility issues. I, I use some uh, some techniques I learned from Prime Pro. I uh, have some some shoulder, so I've been trying to get that that range of motion going for sure. Okay, when you say hip, uh, give me a little bit more detail. Where does it hurt, and what makes it hurt? So it's like my like um, my lower like where my glute is. I I, must, I guess a little, little above above that. So okay, a bit above that. Sometimes it like just from standing too long, or if I uh, if I have a little bit of if I'm carrying. Too much weight for a little while, little long periods of time. I'll have to kind of take a break and try and you know do some ninety nineties to to stretch it out. Excellent. Okay, so um, you're saying right above the glute uh, sounds like SI joint. Are you familiar with the SI joint, the sacroiliac joint, right above the glute? Uh, no, not too familiar. Okay, so it sounds like you're getting a little bit of pain there, and in my experience, um, that comes from. Definitely some issues in the hip, but core stability, believe it or not, makes a big difference there. If your core is not firing and activating the way that it should, then you're going to get a lot of uh, a lot of the pressure and the you know the, of, of the walking and hiking is going to go straight to the hips. And then uh, this is just something that we really figured out later on in our careers. Believe it or not, the ankles and the feet make a huge difference with the hips. If your ankles are, and feet are not doing what they're supposed to. The hips tend to, it's either the knees or the hips that tend to suffer from that kind of stuff. What are you doing for your, what are you doing for your core? Oh, just, like I said, sir, uh, sir, I'm just following the, what's on mass anabolic. Okay. And then, um, uh, and, uh, in, instead of doing the, um, the trigger sessions, sometimes I like to do like farmer carries and sleds. And then I'll do, uh, some, some cable, uh, what are they called with the cables? Uh, I can't think of any side chops. Oh yeah. Some yeah, side yeah. chops and stuff. Okay, so a couple things I'm going to recommend to you. Um, I'm going to recommend that you do uh, planks, but when you do a plank, I want you to do uh, to tuck your tailbone. Okay, so it's our YouTube okay. video. Yeah, we have a video that where I show people how to do this. So in other words, you're doing your plank, but you want your butt to tuck under and squeeze your core. So we're going to strengthen the core while the hip flexors are being active. This is great for people like you, right? Who who get some of this hip pain from walking and hiking. You want the core to do more of the work than it's probably doing right now. There's a second exercise. There's a second video that we have. It's called hip flexor deactivator crunches. I think this will also help you out a lot. Now, these are not like big muscle building exercises, but they're great for corrective type strength. And in your case, I think that they would be phenomenal. Let's move up to the shoulders now. Okay. You said you had some shoulder pain also. Where does your shoulders hurt? What yeah. causes them to hurt? What was that? What was that last part? Where, where, what part of the shoulder bothers you, and then what movements bother your shoulders usually? Uh, it's just uh, like right here in the front, um, but it just gets like exhausted. It's more like, uh, like after I like I'll hit bench for like, after four or five sets, and then it's like, oh, let me let me hit a, like try and get the the windmill going on the wall to to both sides both sides or one side more than the other. Just this side, mostly this side. I don't really feel it anywhere else. Okay, so so you know what that sounds like? Um, it's quite common for people to have uh, bicep tendon inflammation, and that is the bicep tendon runs all the way up above the the top of the the arm bone, the humerus, under the shoulder. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when this happens, it gets tight. If you push on it, it hurts. You bench press, overhead press, a lot of times aggravates mm -hmm. this. Uh, believe it or not, uh, static stretching for the biceps uh, makes a big difference uh, with this kind of shoulder pain. So I would recommend uh, maybe a few times a day to do some bicep stretches, some long hold bicep stretches. 
and then even massage the bicep a little bit while you're doing this. In fact, next time you bench press, uh, do this before you bench press. Stretch your bicep, hold the stretch for a minute, then go bench, and then after the first set, do it again. See if you notice a difference. Oftentimes, front pain, uh, the shoulder pain in the front is coming from something like that. And then, of course, the, uh, the then you would also want to do shoulder mobility work, which you said you're already doing. I think if you add the bicep stretch to that, I think you'd be okay. Really common with like uh, people that have to like hold something. I, I noticed this when uh, after I had Max on that one side of like having to carry him all the time, my bicep in that that isometric position, just being so tight, and then you feel the pull. So pay attention if that's a, if that's a side that you carry. Like your, I don't know if you're carrying your bag and your gear on that side a lot. Uh, but just even if it's not super heavy, but just holding something in that kind of flex position mm. for the bicep for long periods of time during the day, a lot of times that'll cause that. And if you become aware that that's what's causing the the shoulder pain, you'll you'll be good about like stretching right after that happens. So like after I hold Max for ten or fifteen minutes now when I'm with him, I try and stretch it out real quick right afterwards because I know if I don't and I keep doing that, it ends up causing shoulder pain yeah. too. Now, aside from those things, because those are the individualized things, okay? So I'm giving you advice that is specific to kind of what you're telling me. Besides that, generally speaking, your best workout program to follow that's going to help you with what you said earlier, which was the running and the rucking and the long distance stuff. Adam said it earlier, MAPS OCR. MAPS OCR would actually be perfect for that. So I would do okay. the the core stuff that I said, do that daily. I would do the bicep <laughs> stretching daily, the shoulder mobility stuff daily, and then follow MAPS at OCR as your workout. That would be the I think the perfect kind of routine for what you're saying. Hook them up. Yeah. Are you do you have cool. do you have cool. yeah, sounds great. Do you have MAPS OCR, by the way? Oh no, I have uh, all the other ones. <laughs> Actually, right. well, no, I think you, I'm only missing like two or three. Well, no, you well, you got it now. Doug's gonna hook you up. So you're gonna have MAPS OCR. So follow that oh. program. Oh, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. No, nope, no problem, man. Hey, and uh, I know uh, Doug told us earlier before we turned on the cameras, you're serving, uh, you're serving our country. So I, I want to thank you for your service. Oh uh, no, thank you guys for for this that kind of support. And I've, I've been listening to you guys for years, and I appreciate everything you guys do. Uh, you guys helped me grow so much as a person to become a, a better father, leader, and take care of my teammates and, and the people around me. So I, I really do appreciate what y'all do. Yeah. And Hell what yeah. you guys bring bring to us. The audience. Thank you, man. Thanks. Thanks, thanks for calling in. Yeah, thank you. I'll see you. See you, brother. You know, it's great. You could tell that uh, he's he's obviously been listening for a long time. I mean, he's doing the work from Prime Pro. He knew to do the shoulder circles. Like that's cool to hear. Like somebody trying to troubleshoot and st still have. He's got a pretty good idea of yeah. what he needs to do. Just the mm -hmm. the SI joint stuff, and then maybe the bicep, the front of the shoulder pain, like that with the bicep is so money because yeah, because it's shoulder pain. Oh, I shoulder mobility. But I wanted to hear him say it. I bet you money he's carrying his his. That was so good. Yeah, I guarantee. I, know, I, I wish he said that. Yeah, yeah, I guarantee he's carrying his his yeah. gear on one side. Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Or it's his gun or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Something yeah. That he just carries on that. Well, that's why when I asked if it's on one side more than the other, it's. For sure, it's something like that, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Our next caller is Teresa from Iowa. Hey, Teresa, how you doing? I'm well, Sal. Hello. Hi, hi. What's your question? How can we help you? Um, I'm just starting six months into weightlifting, um, and I have bicep tendon tear on a bench press. Really, really don't want to stop, so I'm kind of discouraged. Mm. What can I do? I can still do my squat and my um, deadlift. What can I do for, you know, my biceps and my chest and stuff as I wait to recover? Right. Um, that's a great question. But uh, first, I need to know how you tore it. What, what did you do? Well, you know, I'm, I'm new to this game. So I'm just going to say I was doing a primer um, exercise and I can't remember the name, but I was laying down and I was putting my hands up, squeezing shoulders, and then putting my thumbs to the ceiling. I, I don't, it was hurting a little bit. And then I went right into a bench press and I racked myself up. Mm. Prone Cobra. Is that what you, or handcuff with rotation? Yeah. Maybe? One of those two, it mm. sounds like. Um, yes, and, with rotation. Uh, now, how's it, has it been, um, uh, has a doctor told you you've torn your bicep or is this you, you, uh, diagnosing this yourself. This is Google. Yeah, <laughs> I see. <laughs> and, okay, good. That's a good. I'm, and I'm asking that question because um, sometimes it's just inflammation, right? Um, a bad strain. Yeah, or a strain. Where do you feel the pain? 
um, right in the front of my bicep, up towards my shoulder. Oh, wow. Interesting. You know, I just talked to somebody. I know. We just got off the phone off of something similar. Yeah, very similar pain. Does oh, the cool. does the pain get better when you stretch the bicep or does it get worse? Um, it is getting better. It's been four weeks now and I've been just primers and maybe some bicep curl, but it definitely gets better as I stretch. And I'm thinking the answer is patience, but you know, I'm just new on this and I'm really yeah. wanting to be gung ho. Yeah, no, no. I, you know, I, I feel you getting injured is probably, it's gotta be the most frustrating, especially if you're motivated and you're really getting into it. There's nothing like an injury uh, to frustrate the hell out of you. Yeah. So here's some good news, okay? Um, training other parts of your body does have a systemic effect on the, the, the whole body. So to give you an example, there's these very interesting studies where they'll have people work out just one arm. And what they'll find is there's some strength gains even in the other arm that's not being exercised. So in your case, if you're doing exercises that don't bother uh, this area, like you said, squats and, and other exercises – um, you're you're still far better off than doing nothing at all. So not that's to, the good not to mention a lot. Your leg work is where you're getting the biggest bang for the buck, anyways. When you talk about calorie burn and staying fit and, and building your metabolism, uh, luckily the bicep is going to be something that's very small as far as contributing to that. Totally. Now, here's the second uh, piece of advice I'll give you: is um, do deep tissue massage on the affected bicep, and do light static stretches. I would, st and when you do your primers. Don't be so intense with them right now. Okay, go kind of go through them easy. Don't be so intense. Static stretching and massaging uh, of the bicep might help. And then here's the other thing: when you get back into pressing, make sure your yes. your make sure your chest is out and your shoulders are pinned down and back. When the shoulders roll forward, it places a lot of stress on the bicep tendon for a lot of people. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. And Thank you all. Yeah, yeah, no problem. So um, what are your goals, by the way? You started six months ago. What are your overall goals? Um, I To lose all of my weight and actually to be strong and, you know, I'm pushing 60. I, I got 30 years left in me. I know it. And I'm not going to be able to do that if I continue down the path I was. I became sick. And so I want to get strong. Oh, I, love, I, I love that you're yeah. you're starting right right now. What what was it uh, six months ago that got you going, and how long have you been listening to Mind Pump? Uh, I've been listening to Mind Pump probably right before I started. I became very sick, mm. um, and I said I had a toxic work environment, so I retired early and said it's my time. Good for mm, you. Good job. Very yeah. very good. Okay, and go ahead. Yeah. Continue. Sorry. And so I needed to start eating healthy and I needed to start exercising. And I did, a friend turned me on to Legion, but then through Legion, I found you guys and you guys are awesome. I, I just appreciate everything. Uh, awesome. The are way you intrinsically take this approach, it, it's not about just gaining muscle. It's about whole body health. And that's really what I want. It, beautiful. Yeah. Uh, you know, by, when clients would come to me and talk the way you're talking, I, I would just get so excited because you're, you're, you've taken the, the hardest steps. Uh, it's hard. It's actually difficult to get people to get, to get them where you're at right now. Um, so well, that's excellent. Are you drinking enough water? Are you staying hydrated and avoiding infl inflammatory yes. foods? Yeah. Are you doing, are you eating enough fish and are you getting good omega three fatty acids in your diet? Yes. Yeah, I've started. Um, I wasn't before. Um, I'm taking some joint supplements uh, from Legion because of knees and I am drinking water. I always have been a big water drinker. Um, so the diet is going very well. Um, I'm down 40 pounds. Wow. Uh, wow. Congrats. <laughs> oh, yeah. I feel good. But I want to get better. Okay. I want to be stronger. You're, you're, you're doing great, by the way. Yeah. Though. Yeah. That's phenomenal already. Yeah. You're kicking ass. So I, I'm going to give you one more piece of advice. I want you to take this to heart. Okay, Teresa? Okay. Okay. Take your time. Don't rush anything. Take your time. Allow your body, give your body a chance to adapt and to improve. If you take this approach, you'll get there faster mm -hmm. than if you allow this feeling that you have, which is contagious. I can hear it over the phone right now. When I'm talking to you, I want to go work out right now yeah. just hearing you talk. 
that feeling yeah. that you have, if that takes over, you're going to push yourself a little harder and do a little more than is necessary. Take your time. Yeah. Be, be gentle with yourself. Mm -hmm. You'll get there. You will get there. If you go a little too fast, a little too hard, you increase the risk of, of hitting those, those roadblocks like you just did. So be gentle with yourself. You'll get there. You have yeah. the right attitude. Yeah, especially slow those reps down. Okay. Yeah, take your time with that and find your thresholds. And also, you know, that strength is going to come back. You just got to trust uh, you trust the process. And when things like this happen where, you know, because this is common even for us, as long as we've been training, I still get nagging pain and injuries that come out of nowhere because I've pushed myself too hard or I overreach. You know, this is where I shift my focus. Okay, you know what? I need to be doing more mobility or yoga, stretching or more walking. So when these things do happen, because sometimes they're inevitable, they'll, they'll occur during your journey. Don't let it discourage you and get frustrated and set back or don't let it try and push through it. You know, shift your focus a little bit and say, hey, you know what? I'm going to stay dialed in on the nutrition, get some more walking in, maybe work some mobility, let my body recover a little bit. And then rem always remember, I say this on the podcast all the time, we are always trying to do as little as possible to elicit the most amount of change. And when we're motivated, it's really easy to want to keep overreaching and stretching and pushing ourselves. But really, the goal is just to to do a tiny bit more than what you were doing the month before. So trust the process. That's right. There you're doing is. you're doing great right now. You're doing very good, Teresa. Um, I appreciate you listening thank to the you. podcast, and thank you very much for your question. And congratulations on the forty pounds uh, weight loss. That's phenomenal. That's right. Keep kicking ass. Well, thank you know, you guys. We, we didn't ask you if you have any of the programs. Are you following any of the amounts programs right now? I um, got MAPS Prime after the injury. Um, the reason, I, I got to be honest, I, I went to MAPS Anabolic and I got overwhelmed by some of the exercises that I don't really know the correct form because I'm all about form instead of gaining more knowledge on different lifts. Beautiful. You got trying to you, uh, Teresa, I, I think you should start with Map Starter. I yeah. think that's going to be the better Doug set her up, huh? We're going to give you Map Starter. Start there. Follow Map Starter. <sighs> Thank you. When you're finished with Map Starter, once you complete Map Starter, go back to Maps Anabolic and then do pre-phase. Mm -hmm. Do pre-phase for about 5 to 6 weeks, then move into phase 1, okay? Okay. Okay. That right. sounds great. Beautiful. All right, Thank perfect. you. Thanks again, Teresa. Hey, Merry Christmas, guys. Hey, yes, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Back to back uh, bicep issues. Yes, dude. but so here's the beauty of this. Right. Same question. Different. Totally different. Totally, totally different. different prescription. Yeah. So she's she's got the right attitude. That's so hard oh, to yeah. teach people. I, you, I can oh, yeah. tell though right away. I mean, she's only been going six weeks, right? Mm -hmm. Six weeks, forty pounds already. That's she's she's definitely the type that is pushing, right? Yeah. She's not. She's ambitious right now. She obviously had something in her life. I think she said uh -huh. six months, if I'm not mistaken. Six even, months, even yeah. six months. It's 40, right. forty pounds Still. in six months is is crazy. That's a lot. Yeah, you can yeah. hear uh, like she made that. And I've had a few clients like this, right? They get that switch, that switch mm -hmm. turns, and it's like it's real. It's not yeah. fake. But the challenge with it is overdoing it. It's oh, laser focus. I yeah. love training someone like this because they, they like you, you and you. You did a good job, Sal, of complimenting her that she did, she did the hardest part. Like she's gotten started, she's motivated, she wants to make a change. She has the right attitude of a, a holistic approach. She's just over ambitious, mm -hmm. and so all you got to do is kind of corral someone like that back a little bit and say, "Listen, I know you want to do more, and you want to do this, and you want to do that. You're doing great, and just reminding them you're doing phenomenal. Yep. Yeah. And to listen to your body a little bit, and that's exactly yeah, more is isn't always the answer and right. that's hard to take when everything's kind of yeah. working i i would much rather pull the client back than have to push them oh you know what i mean yeah oh, yeah, yeah no 100 yeah. percent. next caller is ethan from florida hey what's up ethan what's your what's your question yeah so um my question you know i i really appreciate the way that you guys are framing things and and uh the the mindset that you guys are teaching around uh wellness and and being healthy and and viewing as, as self-care as opposed to, you know, beating yourself up. And I'm just curious uh, if you have any tips for someone that's been following you guys a lot on um, how to express these and maybe shift views of, of family members, uh, whether it be your spouse or siblings, uh, to try and get them kind of a bit more health minded, exercise minded. God, dude, you know, it's, this is this is probably one of the most common questions totally. I think as a trainer yeah. that I would get. And I think I, I think I failed at answering it correctly for the first half of my career. It's one of the most difficult yeah. things it to is, handle. It is in you know, so Katrina and I have been together for ten years. You know that if you've been listening to the show for a long time. And it wasn't until year five before 
she even came to me and asked asked for any of my help. And you know, she, because she was somebody who was into exercise, uh, I was like, okay, whatever. But I knew if she was doing everything wrong. And that's really hard for somebody who, that's my profession, I'm watching her do everything wrong, and yet she uh, didn't want any of my advice. And I knew from from prior relationships and from being a trainer for as long as I'd been that if I tried to to tell them uh, without them asking, they would never they would never receive it right and they would never apply it to their life and it become a behavior. And so the only answer that I had was to, to live, live the example and let them see what living a healthy lifestyle will do and get them to ask me questions. And then I had the opportunity to teach. Now, mm-hmm. Ethan, how long have you been uh, consistent with fitness and health for yourself? Consistent or how long I've been engaged are two different answers. Um, you know, I'm a, a father of a five-year-old and a two-year-old. So the consistency over the last five years is has waxed and waned, but um, I mean, really, it's been since high school. I was I was a wrestler in high school, and it really got me got me into to fitness. And um, through high school, through college, uh, and until really until kids is when the the consistency started to fall off. But mm. um, since since really getting back engaged and um, getting on on maps programs, I've been I've been very consistent now uh, who, for a while now. Who's the person that you're referring to when you say family? And I'm, I'm assuming there's someone specific that you want to help. Yeah, so um, I I'll tell you, it is my wife. But when I told her I was talking with you guys, I presented as family. Um, but she saw right through my BS and and realized I was talking <laughs> exactly about her. Smart lady. <laughs> so Ethan, Ethan, let me ask you. Let me ask you a question. Be totally honest, okay? When when you're doing something uh, and you're doing it wrong, uh, do you like your fiance to tell you that you're doing something wrong? How does that feel? Well, it's if I had a fiance, my wife would be very upset. Oh, my bad. <laughs> you know, your I wife. Say, sorry. Maybe that's why he's an alias. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right. My bad. Your wife. Your yeah, wife. No, sorry. look, that's that. No, it's I. I, I see your perspective 100. percent That's exactly why. Where you know, I would say that I've I have never enjoyed a a exercise routine as much as I'm, I'm enjoying maps and, and I've been doing it now for, for many months and I would love to get her engaged on it. And that's mm-hmm. kind of part of the issue is I, I agree with you hundred percent. I know that uh, no one likes uh, criticism, um, mm-hmm. especially when it's something that's like so fundamental. No. Um, and so I'm, I'm more looking for a way to, to make it encouraging, making it, mm-hmm. making it that, that kind of positive mindset that, that Sal talked about on the, the podcast with Arthur Brooks. I mean, like that's, I mean, that's just a beautiful way to think of, of exercise and it's just so much more encouraging and, and it's hard to express that. Um, I would say as a layman, especially to, to, uh, family members, um, and, and your spouse. Now, do you guys work out at home or do you work out at home and does she see you yes. working out at home? Yeah. Now, does she yes. ever want to uh, be included in that? Have you tried to incorporate that at all? I work out at 6 a.m. and and she's um, just waking up when I'm finishing and convincing her to give up some sleep. That's uh, that's not going to happen. Sure. Um, mm-hmm. But but yeah, no, it's she she does not. Um, she she's been trying to get into some other things, but uh, she's at home with the kids and I'm I'm home working from home. And so right. um, I think part of it is just the stress of the pandemic uh, and mm. stress of of really having to care for the kids much more than. Uh, if we had a more normal schedule and a more normal environment, but um, you yeah, know, it's it, it, the engagement isn't isn't there right now. Yeah. Well, here's okay. So there's a f- few things I'll tell you. Uh, fitness is um, strongly connected to personal betterment and personal growth. Okay. So when you tell mm-hmm. somebody uh, that they should work out, that they should start to eat right, they immediately it's 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 very natural for them to think. You want me to be a better. You want me to be better. It's no different than if she came to you and said, "Hey, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I think it'd be awesome if you started to take some courses in learning how to do this thing better." Be like, "Well, what are you talking about?" Mm-hmm. So automatically you feel criticized. So, but now that being mm-hmm. said, um, there's a couple things you could do. Number one, Adam's exactly right. Be the example, and and what I mean by be the example mm-hmm. is you show her uh, just what fitness does. You have more energy. You feel better. It's really you feel great. You're you've got a better attitude. That might convince her. And then now I'm going to give you some hacks. So after you do that, let me give you some mm-hmm. hacks. Okay, here's a wonderful way to get your wife to do something with you. Um, ask her what she would like to do, and then do it with her. So she may say, "I want to do yoga. Let me do yeah. yoga with you." And then when you do it, 
here's what you do. Tell her how sexy she is when she's doing it. So while she's doing yoga, be like, oh my God, you're so hot <laughs> when I'm doing this with you. This is like the hottest thing ever. And, and, and you, you want her to connect the, that connection with the fitness. And in my experience, that's a, a much more effective approach. Uh, trying to tell somebody to work out or rec- never works. Yeah, it never there's works. There's got to be an element of in- inclusivity, and and I think that mm-hmm. if she felt that, you know, and you're like maybe maybe you step down your workouts personally a bit just so you make yourself available so you're around. I, I actually went through a bit of that with my wife. With uh, you know, there's a learning curve to this whole thing, and just to be uh, working out and maybe like. St- take my intensity down just so I could kind of go through the reps and explain what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. She was paying attention to what I was doing just because I kind of, I, I organized my workouts around when I knew uh, she was available. But I mean, that's, that's not like uh, something that you always have to do. It's just probably a good way to spark mm-hmm. it at least. Well, let's, let's not forget either mm-hmm. that nutrition and lifting weights are only two things that's sure. related to your health and fitness journey. I love that Sal recommend like yoga because Here's a, if if I was trying to get uh, you know my wife to get into exercise and I'm and I feel that there's resistance there. One thing I I, I haven't met a wife yet who doesn't like uh, to have alone time with her husband and go on a walk and talk. That's it. You oh, know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. it, and so I I'm gonna it's find first I'm gonna find other things that I think that she's gonna really enjoy. That's going to improve our overall health, right? So and that could be. You know, making a tradition now that after dinner we we go for a walk, or when there's times that you guys have somebody who can relieve you from the kids, that you you make time to go do physical activities, and that could be a hike on the weekends where you know maybe mom or mother in law is watching the kids, and you get to go out for two hours and go hike somewhere pretty, or you know, or meditating mm-hmm. or reading together. All these things are are all growth aspects or pursuing a, a better version of the two of you, and just because uh, maybe we are uh, you and I us are into nutrition and weightlifting and that's the things that we kick ass at and we like and we see the most results from doesn't mean that we can't find something else that's related to the health journey and then you start to build on that and like Sal mentioned earlier you know, you start getting into that and, and you, you start sparking that growth mindset. Oh, now all of a sudden you guys are reading together, you're walking after dinner together, and now she's getting a little excited about or interested or curious about some of the things that you're doing in the weight room or with nutrition, and that opens the door there. But if you try and force them or, or, or push uh, what you're doing as far as weight training or nutrition on them, it, you're, it's, a, it's a dead end. Like, it's not going to last. Yeah. In, in fact, in, in How my, would you? In, in, one, one last thing. In fact, if you push yeah. too hard, in my experience, you actually uh, they'll actually not do it. They're right, more likely right. to not do it. Yeah, you'll get the opposite. That's right. You'll get the opposite. Yeah. Yeah. How would you maybe nudge? Because I think the, the one place that's like the, an easy place to make a change, it doesn't require any more time. It's just making different decisions. How would you nudge someone... Um, on the on the uh, nutrition side, I know oh. I've heard you guys talk about like focus on addition of healthy foods first, um, mm-hmm. and and we do eat relatively healthy, but um, both of us have a bit of a sweet tooth and and uh, just trying to break that. How would you nudge someone in that regard? Mm-hmm. Okay, here, this is a, this is a wonderful hack. Okay, this is an easy one. Uh, not easy in the sense that changing nutrition is always hard, but uh, mm-hmm. easy in the sense that making that initial step is actually. Uh, quite simple. Um, you need to do all the grocery shopping yeah. and start preparing I was the food. Just gonna say, you do that's the it. cooking. Like you take over one night, and the, you know that's where it starts, and you just start introducing it. Yeah, she's not gonna complain yeah. when you're you're cooking or right. you're the one that did the grocery shopping. And and I think I think you guys are both kind of swinging for the fence a little bit. I'd make that even simpler. Is just you know pick one night out of the week that you want to mm-hmm. try a new meal that's healthy. That's right. You know, find a recipe mm-hmm. online. There's I mean they're everywhere, right? And find something that looks interesting to you or her. And it could be something you do together, you know, prepare it in the kitchen together or you prepare it for her, but start to experiment with uh, healthy dishes and you start by maybe you preparing it first and see if it starts to catch a little bit of traction. Yeah, hey, you know, like something like, hey, you know, Tuesday, I'd love to spend some time with you. Mm -hmm. Do you want to go on a walk or a hike together? And then and then after Mm -hmm. that, I'm going to make you dinner. Uh, I want to I'd like to make you some Mm -hmm. dinner. I mean. That's a date. You know what I'm saying? To her, she's mm-hmm. like, wow, that is a romantic mm-hmm. date. And you do that you know, enough times, uh, she starts to build a wonderful association with mm-hmm. doing activities with you. And before you know it, she'll be in there lifting mm-hmm. weights with you. Mm-hmm. That's a great idea. No, I appreciate that. I want to thank you guys. That's the last thing I just want to say. I want to thank you guys. It's I, I'm so happy I found you. I'm so happy with the, the workouts. Keep, keep up the hard work because I know it is hard work. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. All right.
Have a good one. You, you too. too. Yeah, yeah, so um, it's great that he found us through uh, Arthur Brooks. I love that guy. No, you know what he's asking so many people struggle with I when know, they find yeah. fitness. They it's like um, you know what it reminds me of. It's like when fun, someone it's like evangelizing. Yes, someone finds religion. Yeah. They want to tell everybody totally. about it. Yeah, it's yeah. exactly like because well, it and and you it changes and, your life. Exactly, it's hard not to blame them for that because it's changed your life yeah. so much. You're so passionate, and about it's it. a positive thing that you're giving them. So it's it's hard for you to not understand why they're not receiving it. I mean, I struggled with this as a trainer for years. I mean, I. I, the first like decade, like because it was so life changing for me, I was telling everybody mm -hmm. and you know trying to push everybody in that direction, annoying everybody. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah, you know, yeah. so you, it is. It's it, it's it's tough and it's hard to hear. But I mean, I even when uh, I remember coming into Katrina's family when I was when I was new to the family, I was right in the thick of like competing and carrying my Tupperware around yeah. and like, oh man, th I swear they didn't like me. They hated me because it was so annoying because they have so many like family parties and get-togethers. But it was after they saw like the result, the plan, everything that w I was building towards and then getting into competing. Then all of a sudden the attitude of like, you know, having this like uh, nose up in the air about Adam bringing his Tupperware. Now all the family was coming to me asking for advice and how mm -hmm. did you do that or how yeah, did, can you help me? Imagine if you showed up preaching. Oh, right. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, man. And making them feel guilty for what they were doing. Like yeah. I, I was... Yeah, so it's, it's no. I, tough. I, I tell you, if you have if you have good connecting time with your significant other, you know, mm -hmm. you flirt with them, you have fun during the workouts. Uh, they'll want to do that yeah. stuff with you. You know, yeah, you well, just the, make time for them. The key is to understand that it's not always got to be resistance training and That's nutrition. Right. There's right. lots of other things that that uh, encompass health yeah. that I bet there she is into. I guarantee, sure. a long walk with her husband and having a great talk about their day. Totally, she yeah. would absolutely love. You know, and so you start with things like that that are, are going to appeal to her and then you build upon yeah, them. Get reconnected first. Right. Our next caller is Aaron from New York. Hey, Aaron. Good uh, morning, Aaron. What's your question? Hi. So my question is, um, what is the best way to deal with a manager at my gym that programs not great group classes? Oh, um, God. <laughs> a lot of cardio <laughs> weights, high intensity <laughs> I want to be the best coach for my clients, but I'm pretty limited with how much I can change in the class. Okay, so oh, wow. so you're so you're a trainer there. Well, wow. this is a landmine. Yes. So this is this was me at Orange Theory. This is me at Orange Theory. Do you totally. do you teach group classes there as well, or do you just train people one on one? I train group classes. That's where I started with, and now I also train people one on one. Now, mm. do you have the the autonomy from the owner to run your classes the way you want? Yes, kind of on the back end. He he knows I change things, and uh, he's all right with that. But I haven't been given complete like uh, do whatever kind of. It's also hard because I work a full time job, so I'm already training people one on one. It's hard for me to do a whole group class change when I should just be able to kind of go in. You know what I mean? Yeah. So this is like uh, very close to home for me. So I, I don't know if you know this, but when we first started Mind Pump, I was also helping my buddy Brendan. Uh, start up the first Orange Theories in the Bay Area. And if if you've been listening to the podcast long enough, you obviously know my stance on group training. Yet here I am teaching a group training class. <laughs> so this was the same exact dynamic. Now, And luckily, uh, Brendan sounds like your boss, where he gave me the, some freedom and, and latitude to kind of m you know mold or change some things that I really didn't like in the group class. But I still had to somewhat follow their protocol, which was still challenging for me, right? So what right. I what I started to do was the last five minutes or so of the class, I started to turn into like I would teach like one thing. And of course, I was trying to teach something related to what the problems that I'd see in the class. For example, uh, when you're in a, a class setting like that, uh, you know, and you're, it's supposed to be you're trying to be building strength. Uh, clients tend to, you know, no rest periods. They go right in the next one, right in the next one, right in the next one. And they just they don't they don't rest and gather themselves and then go to the next weight. Uh, at an orange theory. And so that would be like a topic of the day is the importance of, of rest periods for building strength and not just doing cardio with weights. Or I might pick out an exercise that I saw everybody doing incorrectly and, I, and they're doing it incorrectly because they have mobility issues. And so I might talk about the importance of ankle and hip mobility when we're squatting down and why some people will lean forward or they'll feel it in their knees or their hips. I would just like pick one thing a day 
that I would teach after my class. And my classes became very popular for that because I wasn't just teaching the group class. I'd always give this, this bit of of information and education surrounding uh, the group that was in there. And that's what kind of allowed me to still be able to implement my philosophy and the things that I thought were important and the things that I saw wrong in the group training while also still being a group training coach at the same time. Yeah. The other thing too, Aaron, is uh, if you if you have the flexibility to kind of teach the classes the way you want to, then the best thing you could do is teach the classes the way you want to and get those classes to fill up. If your gym manager sees that you are successful and you're bringing in members and people value you, that gives you a lot more power because I think the gym manager is yeah. probably going to be quite interested uh, or at least they have a strong interest in having a successful facility. So if Aaron's classes are the ones that are filling up, if Aaron's members are, are constantly asking about her, if everybody else is saying, I want to do that class, mm. you've got a lot more uh, influence. And I know that's what happened to Adam. That's, exa- that's exactly how it yeah. went down. Yeah, I know. It started off with little bits of me teaching, and then eventually I got all the freedom. And then I started to completely change the format. I changed the total, how the, I look at what they had for me to teach for the day, and very little of it would stay on, on the routine. But I, I had to get to that point. I had to first you know, introduce a little bit of, of my philosophy of, around what they're teaching and without insulting the business, right? And slowly do that. And then once it got to a point where I had so many people waiting for my class, that the bosses pretty much went, okay, we're not going to let Adam do his mm-hmm. thing. We're, we'll make everybody else follow this thing, but let him do his thing because he's our, our number one coach. So that should be your goal is to give – don't change too much to where you end up pissing everybody off. Try and add more value to that class by adding the things that you see that you don't like about group training. Right. Uh, but don't do it in a way that you're you're putting down, you know, the boss or other people. Do it in a way that you're just adding more value to your class, mm-hmm. and eventually you'll be known as that that coach that's going mm-hmm. that extra mile, and then you have more freedom. Plant plant those seeds for sure, and also if you can make yourself available. Uh, you know, outside of that to then kind of have that interventional type of, uh, you know, mobility practices and like more furthering their their information with how they can like help their joints. Uh, you could even start wrapping, you know, two clients together and like taking them through like actual, uh, you know, priming and, and, and ways that they can actually, uh, you know, add some longevity to these type of workouts. So that this is great, Justin, what you just said. So Aaron, I don't know, have you seen the MAPS Prime Pro webinar that we did? Yeah. So actually, I have to thank you guys for every all of your content. So quick background on how I found you guys is because the owner approached me to do the group classes. And then I quickly took on more responsibility and I had no idea what I was doing. So I was searching for information, found you guys, found the podcast, found the YouTube, and I have almost every program now. And that's what I use um, for my one-on-ones. That and I try girl. to do priming like as we warm up. Perfect. And I think I've been able to provide a lot of value because of that. And I just want to thank you guys so much for providing all your content. Hell yeah, that a girl. So what Justin was just alluding to was actually one of the things I also started to do with the class. So again, instead of uh, asking the bosses, can I completely change your your format? I said, Would, could we add a, a day? And I did it on Saturdays for one hour. And it was on a time that they weren't using the, the classroom. And I started to offer everyone that took my classes to come see me on Saturdays for this mobility class. And I, would, I offered my service for free so I could teach them and educate them. And before long, that class became so full. And that was it. all I was teaching was the Maps Prime Pro webinar, basically. So those all those mobility moves, I'd do that for like an hour with them. And I'd be talking to them while I'm teaching them. So I'm teaching these moves and I'm telling them, this is why this is so important for you to do this. This is why your knees hurt or your hips hurt or your back hurts when you take these classes and you go in circuits. This is why I'm always trying to teach you guys to slow down and work on your form and your core. And so I can, you, it allowed me to like really educate while also, you know, taking them a great mobility class. Um, that's a good way to approach the boss instead of, again, trying to get him to completely change what he's doing offer your services outside of the the time that they're using, start to try and fill that class up with the people that you're already teaching. Build some interest. That's right. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, Aaron, thank you very much well, for calling in. Thank you, guys. Merry Christmas. You Merry too. Christmas. Merry Christmas. 
Yeah, Man, I, I mean, could totally relate to that. Oh, one. dude, when, oh, I mean, here's totally. the deal. I manage gyms for a long time. If I had somebody in my gym that was working for me that was different than I was, mm -hmm. but they were bringing in members, providing value, their classes were full. It's undeniable. I'm gonna be okay the, the with key, it. Though the hard part though, and where she's at is that transition. Yes. yes, it's it's not. It's when you when you're taking when you're teaching it, and you know that. You, you 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 would teach it differently or you're not happy with the format. You gotta be calculated with Exactly. You yep. can't just go like, I'm gonna run it differently. Right. No, because there's no evidence then yet. Then you're gonna get yes. pushed back immediately. Yeah, you gotta and that's why I mean the way I did it was by just adding more value to what we were already currently doing to to gain that trust from my members. Totally. And then offered a free service on top of that. And then before long it was like, okay, now everybody was yeah. and then it was really easy. Now it's like Adam, what are you doing? How can yeah, we why is why is Adam's classes booked out two months and the next coach is Maybe, Maybe we should incorporate this. Right, right. You can come watch Mind Pump uh, as well as listen to Mind Pump on YouTube. We're on YouTube as well, Mind Pump Podcast. You can also find all of us on social media. Instagram is the place we're most at. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, Adam at Mind Pump Adam, and Doug, the producer, at Mind Pump Doug. You get a stability ball that costs 20 bucks yeah. on Amazon and shipped to your house the next day. And you do a bench, but what you do is just drop your hips. Mm -hmm. So instead of creating a bridge and doing a normal uh, uh, press, you let the hips drop down and now it's an incline press. That's why I love the stability. In fact, we used to do we used to uh, uh, 